Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tēnā <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to open by um, acknowledging the, the minister who opened this debate and recognising the, the unique situation that she is um, shepherding through the House, um, a bill that is of such significant personal importance to her and her whanaunga. <coughs> I'll take only a short call on this bill, which we in the Greens have already undertaken to support through all of its readings. And while we've not participated directly in the select committee process, it's clear that a great deal of very valuable and useful work has been done in that committee, and that issues have been honestly and openly dealt with, if not in every case resolved, which is inevitable. But clearly there's been a great deal of goodwill around this process, and it does show both in the documents and in the outcome. <coughs> We acknowledge the work of the Minister and of the members of the Māori Affairs Committee who have supported this process. And most of all, we wish to um, take the opportunity to acknowledge Ngāti Awa, Ngāti Apa, and wish them all the best for the progress of this bill to the extent that it will restore their tino rangatiratana, their mana motahaki over their own lands. <coughs> this bill reflects that Ngāti Apa, like so many other iwi and hapu, have for over a century been engaged in a struggle, a very real struggle, for the resolution of wrongdoing and for the receipt of justice and to see the honouring of solemn commitments that were made on both sides of the treaty relationship in 1840. <coughs> and again, we would just like to acknowledge and offer our respects to that struggle and to those who have participated in it over many generations. <coughs> it's clear that the progress of this bill and the negotiations that have underpinned it have followed a pattern um, that certain elements have emerged which are becoming commonplace or familiar at least within these treaty settlement processes. It's clear within the report there has been some serious concerns expressed from particular hapu who have felt that their inclusion in this process against their wishes and preferences uh, could to some extent compromise their own uh, preferred outcomes in this way. And this objection or objections of this sort are common to just about every settlement process, current or past. And I think it's fair to say that the Crown's policy of negotiating settlements with large natural groupings is one that must be constantly challenged and must be under constant review to ensure that we do not get outcomes which deny the, the settlement of legitimate concerns and the right of hapu to self-identity and to the self-determination of their futures. <coughs> we note that there have been claims that some of the lands um, under settlement or that will be returned under settlement um, in this case are also claimed by other iwi. And again, this is a typical effect of colonisation and the imposition of, uh, of Western property law rather than tikanga over generations, which has confounded to some extent the appropriate resolution of inter iwi disputes and which could otherwise have been resolved. <coughs> and again, it's in common um, with other settlements, and it was referenced by the former Speaker, that there are those within the wider community who seem to have a concern that a degree of suspicion even that somehow the, the settlement, the return of assets and mana to the affected iwi and hapu um, is somehow too much, that somehow the proposed settlement might reduce or compromise the rights or the expectations of those who have become accustomed to a particular situation or practice. And the reality is, of course, that Ngāti Awa, and as with so many other iwi and hapu, have been extraordinarily patient and have been equally modest and realistic in their expectation of what can be done in the 21st century to put right the transgressions of the 19th and 20th century. The detail of the Crown purchases contained in the preamble to this bill tells a story that highlights very well the almost complete lack of generosity, of the, the lack of empathy, the almost complete selfishness of those who are embarked on purchasing land from Ngāti Apa. And I think we can be, consider ourselves very fortunate that in the 21st century Māori are much more generous of spirit in accepting only part of what was taken away as resolution, as redress from the Crown. <coughs> it is encouraging and very positive to see that there will be significant material assets returned to Ngāti Apa that there will be some wealth which will enable them to build an economy to utilise those resources in ways which are appropriate for them. 
and which are appropriate to the, their exercise of their mana. But equally important to that tangible return, to those tangible assets, is the sincere apology from the Crown, which does acknowledge the mana of these people and does acknowledge that their objections and their claims, their grievances over a century have been justified, have been realised and in fact were legitimate. And I cannot stress, as others have, the significance of the apology of the symbolic return as much as the, as the tangible redress, the return of, of assets. <coughs> There's not much more that I would wish to say except to, again to acknowledge the good work of those in this House who have, um, who have put through this bill and those who are no longer here but who made significant contributions to it. This bill is clearly about settlement but it's also an opportunity for the truth of our shared history to be spoken and to be heard and we hope to be better understood. And knowing a little more of our own history, of our shared history, will certainly um, perhaps progress us towards a speedy resolution of the settlements and those that will follow it. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.